I think the major problem is that uh, there's a lot of scepticism around. So I think people often are sceptical about what the motivations are behind system reorganisation. So they're not necessarily confident that there is a real population need or that there is a clinical or economic impetus that is motivating the change. So they're sceptical about what the drivers for change are because sometimes it can be perceived that change is implemented and system reorganisation is introduced as a means of political leaders being seen to be doing something in health. So it's not necessarily something that is motivated by a genuine need. And I think also there is a challenge around centralisation. So a lot of the time system reorganisation is implemented very much from a top-down position. So that means that people who are working on the ground aren't necessarily very well engaged in the process and also they can feel that it's very much sort of a process that is done to them rather than them having a sort of genuine input into that process. I think the first challenge is a very practical one, it's around data collection. So it's not feasible to interview every single person working within your health system, but you need to find a way to um, engage those people and to gather their views because, as I say, if you don't gather those views, then people are going to be sceptical, they're not going to buy into the change that you're trying to achieve, but you also won't be able to learn from their vast experience and capture their ideas. So the data collection is a major issue, but I think this is something that people can work their way around. We can implement surveys that can um, gather the views of large numbers of people in a way that doesn't have to be costly, it doesn't have to be time consuming. But that's a major challenge. And I think there's also, uh, for want of a better way to put it, an emotional challenge. So sometimes people don't necessarily want to hear criticism. That's a very human response. And if you've got an idea and you think it is the appropriate way to solve the problem and to reorganize your system, you may not want to hear people criticizing it or telling you that it's wrong. I think surveys are a really powerful tool for uh, gathering insights into what your staff think. And in a recent project we were working on, we used a large scale survey which was deployed in a number of countries and looking at people from all different levels of leadership to understand their experiences of leadership but also their perceptions of it. And we found that this was actually a really powerful way to collect data and we were very pleasantly surprised by the richness of the data that we collected. So we did have a lot of closed response questions, so can you rate this particular problem on a scale of 1 to 7 in terms of how much it affects you and is this issue um, important to you, etc. So those kinds of responses. But we also asked people some open-ended questions where we said, how could leadership be better in your country and, and things like that. So very open questions and we were very pleasantly surprised by just how insightful the comments were and also how honest they were. I think being anonymous helped so people really gave us some rich responses and we were also intrigued by the level of emotion that was expressed. So clearly something like leadership which we perhaps think of as being quite a, an organisational and administrative issue was something that was emotionally affecting the people that we surveyed which was something that we perhaps hadn't expected to find when we set out. The first benefit is really that you gain real insight into the problems. So you're not getting an idealised view of your health system. You are understanding what the issues are that people on the ground are facing, but you're also managing to harness some of their ideas. So you're creating a culture of innovation and you're managing to take the vast experience that they have, both in terms of the challenges they've faced, but also where they've seen opportunities, where they have ideas for different ways that things could be done. I think also surveys are something that, when properly used, can be really valuable tools in gathering a large amount of data, but also a large amount of potentially useful data. The 
important point is in the design of them. But they're not necessarily something that is very expensive to deploy, and they're not necessarily something that is very complicated. But the major caveat I would add to anyone thinking about deploying a survey to find out more about their staff's um, perceptions of any issues around system reorganisation is don't collect any data that you don't intend to use. Because if you're sort of nominally engaging people and gathering their views but not actually planning to do anything with those insights, then you're just going to add to that problem of scepticism and cynicism that I talked about earlier.